Evan Sutton here. I'm here at uh, Dubspot in New York City. You may know me from tutorials on YouTube channels such as this one. Uh, today we're going to talk about the new uh, Lemur app for iOS. We're going to work with the editor a little bit and get everything going with Ableton Live. If you haven't seen part one of this tutorial, I suggest you check it out because today we're going to pick up where we left off. So now that we've got our interface all set up on our iPad, it's time to connect everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the settings button on the iPad app, and then you're going to see uh, a list of your MIDI targets. Now I've set up everything in this particular interface for MIDI target 7. So I'm going to click on the from, where it says unassigned, and I'm going to go ahead and choose a daemon output. In this case I'm going to use daemon output 0. And for 2, I'm going to use daemon input 0. I'm going to leave them on the same input and output channel. So now that that's done, you can hit done and your interface will look the same. And you're going to open up the daemon on your computer. You should see that the daemon inputs and outputs are set up with your iPad. Okay, so now that the daemon is set up, the lemur is actually communicating with the computer in terms of MIDI. The uh, lemur daemon is actually going to act as the MIDI source within the computer. So I'm going to go into Live's preferences here. And under MIDI and sync, you should see a list of your daemon inputs, okay? Just make sure that the track and remote are set to on, okay? I just have all of them turned on because who knows which one I'll be using tomorrow and who knows where I'll be. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And now at this point, you should see things moving around. At the very least, you should see the little MIDI light light up when you move a controller. Now I've taken the liberty of MIDI learning a lot of these controls to these eight effects and two sends. So we have a beat repeat, we have a bit crusher, we have two auto filters, one low pass and one high pass. I also have corpus, a chorus, a frequency shifter, and an auto panner. Now the faders are mostly set up to control the dry and wet of the effects, but I have two extra faders controlling the send level to a couple of return tracks that I've made. Return A is a reverb, and return B is an echo in the form of a grain delay that I've set up. Now, I have two faders that are controlling those send levels for A and B on my audio track. In addition to the faders, I have two multi-ball objects in my lemur interface. They're color coordinated with the effects that they're controlling. The first one is controlling parts of corpus, and the second part is going to actually control the amount and rate of my chorus effect. Let's MIDI learn that right now. So like I said in the previous tutorial, the multi-ball can be a little bit tricky to MIDI learn because we're talking about two separate controllers in one movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the ball and I'm going to put it to the bottom left corner. And right now it's floating around a little bit because I have the physics set up, but if I go back over to my jazz editor, I can turn the mass spring off just for this moment. We'll turn it right back on in a minute. So I have my multi-ball down in the bottom left. So what I can do to MIDI learn it in Ableton Live is actually I can hold it against the edge of the box so that we're only moving in one dimension. So I'm going to click on the amount here. I'm going to MIDI learn it by sort of pulling off to the side and we can see now that only one controller has been learned. I'm going to click on the rate here and I'll move this thing horizontally and now we have set up perfectly an XY grid with multiball. All right, now that we've done that, we can go back to the editor, and I'm going to turn Mass Spring back on. One of the great things about this software is that it actually instantly updates the iPad so that I can use it immediately. I can go back to throwing this ball around a little bit, which I really love. Now, I've set up this container object here, and what it's done is created a tabbed interface. So if I hit Transport here, I can go to my second tab. So on this second page, I've set up a few buttons to fire off scenes in Ableton Live. The first of which is a nice little song by yours truly that we're going to play right now. This lemur interface, as well as a live set that includes the effects rack I built for it, will be available for download. 
My name is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm a co-designer and developer of the Sound Design and Synthesis program here at DubSpot in New York City, as well as online. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for more. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.